anything? Sure. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Kateri Osborne and I'm the director of events at CRE Tech and the News Funnel. Um, our company's mission is to bring innovation to the commercial real estate industry. We do that through events, original content, and aggregated news. I hope you will all sign up for our platform at www.seritech.com, my little mini advertisement. <laughs> um, so we are excited to have partnered with ICSC to bring the Innovation Exchange to Recon for the first year. Thank you very much, Kelly and team over there at ICSC for giving us this opportunity. We have a number of amazing exhibitors who include security robots, virtual reality um, office space scanning robots. We have uh, food vending machines where you can taste the experience, you can touch the experience, you can see it. 3D body scanning. Um, there's a million different ways that you can innovate the space in ways that you could never even imagine. And I am thrilled to be here with Susan, who is with MCART by Mavatar. She is their CEO, and she's going to give you a little taste of what their company does and how she got started in the industry. Thanks, Kateri. And Thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity. And actually, thanks ICSC for giving us the opportunity to showcase our uh, the software that we have spent over seven years R&D, millions of dollars uh, behind the uh, company, and the idea of uh, closing the gap between online and offline shopping, sales, and advertising with one platform. It was a hairy goal at the beginning. It started with my uh, research study in the Stanford Graduate School of Business. I'm coming from advertising and marketing background. And one of the questions that always our clients were asking us after us asking them to renew their advertisement was we really don't know what was the ROI of that uh, commercial or advertisement in, in your media. Uh, and I used to be a journalist as well. So we, did, we, we couldn't really track uh, the advertising dollars to sales dollars for them. No one could do it, no one can do it still. And that was a question that always uh, bothered me as someone who is running um, uh, uh, those efforts. As a journalist also, former journalist, uh, I'm still writing for Forbes, but uh, I used to be an investigative reporter. Um, I, I always thought that uh, we're, uh, journalists never get appreciated for what they're writing because content really can sell. You can't really sell content anymore, because, and you see that subscription models and push advertising models are failing uh, left and right. But um, uh, the content can sell, content can create a, a very strong emotional connections between products and consumers. And if we could leverage, uh, leverage that uh, influence or that content, we, c we could help brick and mortars, retailers to sell more, and we could help advertisers to track their advertising dollars, marketing dollars to sales dollars. So I could answer that question, leveraging the content which was really close to my heart as a former journalist. However, as a software designer, uh, I thought, uh, I, I was thinking that there should be a better way to create a consumer-centric commerce, right? We're creating a lot of technologies and tools for retailers to feel empowered, to feel that they have control on the market, but consumer, at the end of the day, needs to feel empowered, needs to feel uh, and, and have confidence to their decision making and shopping to buy more. If they buy more with confidence, retailers can sell more and advertisers can, you know, uh, can have a better ROI on the advertisement. So how we can create a consumer centric commerce? The reality is we have mil, I mean, millions, uh, maybe four million apps in the app stores, right? a lot of websites, a lot of storefronts. When I need a size six dress and I go to a shopping center and my price range is between 200 to 300 dollars and I know my fit, my you know style and everything, how, how when I go to mall, I don't have the experience that I have online to narrow down my decision quickly because I don't have that time anymore to do window shopping. Right? And 83% of whatever is purchased 
uh, uh, today is purchased by women that were now mostly, you know, career women, and we don't have that time that our grandparents, grandmothers had to go to do one day or two days of window shopping. I want to go to mall and I want to search and filter and browse and create a shopping cart and you know get to the results very quickly because online shopping is great, but you see that the growth of online shopping has not been the way that we were predicting even 10 years ago. We only sell 10% of whatever we're selling on uh, uh, in United States online. This is not the growth that we were promising. So there's something missing from online shopping. And what is that? Touch and feel. Socializing. You know, you can't really do online shopping with your mom and sisters and friends and share ideas, have fun. That part of entertainment, part of it, is really missing. And I can't touch and feel this stuff. So how I could bring all these worlds of mine together. It was uh, done when I was researching in the Stanford on new advertising models effect on user privacy and surplus and what we're giving to consumers when we're pushing millions of ads and banner ads and everything that we can, junk mail and junk email, down to their throat hoping that they can extract value out of all of this information that we're hoping them to be able to process. They're not a robot. They can process all this information. So if we create a GPS for them to make to, to go through the decision journey from discovery to transaction and make sure that every time that they're making a mistake and turn the wrong, wrong turn, we're not penalizing them and we help them to get back, turn another right and you're, you're fine, you know, you can do it. If we can create that GPS for them and process tons of information that the industry is providing them, coupons, feature stories, lookalikes, what has been said about the product, where can I find it, online or offline, five miles radius of my house in the next two hours, you know, what, what kind of deals I can get on that, is that the dress that that celebrity wore in that uh, um, Oscar 2017. So these are the information that we need to make our shopping decisions, right? Or what my mother says about, you know, this, is, is, that, is that a good fit for me? We don't have all of this even online, right? Offline is just like, and then when you look at the market, you see Amazon with all the bots that they created, they only carry 5% of the US retail sales. So where is that other 95%? 5% is coming from online of the top retailers, and 90% is still done offline. So let's optimize and make create a better experience for that big inventory that is not reachable by the consumers, right? This is wasting of, of sales, marketing, uh, inventory management, all, all these uh, dollars. So what we're, what we're doing with Mavatar and with the MCART, I mean, Mavatar is the name of the technology and MCART platform is our product. With MCART platform, we're allowing uh, malls to, malls, media companies, uh, CPGs, whoever has a reason to create a marketplace, uh, we allow them to create a marketplace and bring the inventory of all the stores, all the, uh, uh, practically create an ecosystem for their uh, shoppers, uh, retailers, and influencers, right? This is very important. These three constituencies are the most important constituencies of any marketplace. And people love, consumers love the experience of the marketplace. And that's why Amazon is really, uh, is really successful. But if you, if you look at their market, it's uh, small to mid-sized businesses, right? The top retailers, have every reason to not to work with Amazon. They're diluting, Amazon is diluting their brands. They're not uh, giving them the end consumers uh, uh, information, so they really can't upsell and cross sell afterwards. So they have every reason to not to work with that fragmented market, not Amazon, but they don't want to be next to that fragmented market. So what, what we can do is creating many of these Amazons for top retailers, for brick and mortars, bring the experience, online experience to offline world with MCART platform, allow people to go to the mall, search the inventory of the mall, browse and filter and quickly find things, 
create a shopping cart, send it for salespeople uh, in the stores to get them re get the product ready for them to pick up or try on. And also, the best part of the, the story is these shopping carts are shareable. You can, with one click, share them in Instagram. We put a uh, we we create a unique ID for each cart. Right, lives in our platform, has a unique ID. You can share it with others with one click in Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest, send them by email, send them by text, and also you can use them for monetization of content. So what this platform does is not going right just after the influencers, we call them mid-tier influencers, fashion bloggers or celebrities or tools publishers. We are dividing the market influence marketing to three important sections. Uh, micro influencers who are my cousins and my friends or say oh this is this looks really good on you you have to buy it right that's those are micro influencers that there is no way for them to track their influence to sales dollars and if you don't encourage them and incentivize them they're not going to do more right the mid-tier influencers is something that the industry is going after. We probably get 50% of their influence monetized. But the macro influencers are Oscar, Grammy Award, all these TV shows. These macro influencers, their content gets leveraged by mid-tier influencers and tools publishers, but they never can monetize their influence in a scalable way. So we created a platform that is all done on blockchain. So micro payments for millions of uh, people who are promoting your products to other consumers, right, uh, is really difficult. If you have a sales force of five million entities and individual, it means that you have to send sales commission checks every month uh, five million of them for these guys. Every check you're sending, if the commission is five dollars, can cost you fifteen to twenty dollars. So without blockchain, the uh, cutting edge technology, that was not even possible. So what we did with MCard, we created a vehicle for user generated advertising. And when we're talking about the user, we're talking about Vogue magazine versus my cousin, who is promoting the product of any retailers uh, using our platforms. And we're hoping by the end of 2019, we can create at least 20 Amazons, maybe 10x larger than the inventory of, um, of Amazon for ecosystem that deserve to monetize their influence and their base. Sorry about <laughs> going too long. No, that was amazing. And, you know, it's like to listen to you talk about this and I can actually conceptualize it. Um, you know, for someone who doesn't have any kind of a tech product background, like you just, you make it so understandable <laughs> for the end user. I appreciate and, it. And, um, you know, this comment might get me in trouble if Amazon ever saw it, but like I was a huge fan of Amazon. Yeah, you know, no, they did a, they just created a great experience, but they just don't have enough inventory the for Amazon us. Prime and, you know, really targeting yeah. that female yeah. with not enough time to go shopping. The mothers, the full-time career women. I mean, you put all of that together plus like, like when you have to run this and you've got your extracurriculars and your yeah. hobbies and you still want to feel like a human. Amazon was great. Well, fast forward two years later, now that my daughter's older, Amazon's not great. When it sends stuff to me, she hates it, so it's all got to go back. Like now I just take her to the mall. And, and it's I really wish, hard to and send I wish it to mail. that I had that app to like take me around the mall and say, oh, go here. Your daughter's going to love that. Oh, go here. Nope, take a left. And then it like literally she loves my phone and she could just hold it. And if it tells her to go this way, she could just go right yeah. with it. Yeah, no, this is sharing the shopping carts. Shopping carts are, are silo parts of the, uh, the e-commerce engines that after checkout, they die. This is curation of content and product. There's time that you, you put into creating a shopping cart. Right? And, and there's, there's a huge to shopping cart. Everything. Yeah, everything. And now we're allowing people to add media, their own pictures, content, searchable content within our marketplaces. So you literally can go to one of our marketplaces and search for cancer, right? And find all the M cards which proceeds goes to cancer causes. This is emotional connection between product and consumers that unfortunately Amazon couldn't create, but the main problem, I think, I still think Amazon brought an amazing experience that we've never had. Marketplace, aggregation. We don't want to go to thousands of mobile apps and stores and websites to find that size six dress. We want to have the, all these inventories aggregated and go and find what we need very quickly. That experience was amazing and Amazon did a great job you know, teaching us that this is possible. However, 
top retailers have uh, that's a, that's a completely different market, right? They are carrying and servicing, serving the fragmented market of SMBs, but top retailers and brick and mortars need more instruments and different type of service and technology to help them to aggregate their inventory for consumers. So, I'd like so I'd like to get your opinion on the whole subscription economy. Mm -hmm. like the stitch fixes of the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. You know, the startup that um, one of my sorority sisters created, Redenim. Mm -hmm. I mean, just what What do you think that that's going to do? Very good question, uh, Kateri. Uh, when we started uh, uh, Mavitar, I, I was 40 years old at that time, graduated <laughs> from a school. I wanted to, you know, uh, go after another passion of mine being VC. I'm, I'm still a partner in the fund, but I wanted to focus on that, but then everything happened. And after that research, why were, you know, shadowing people, giving them junk? Let's help the consumers to make decisions. So but when we started Mavitar, all the alpha users that we brought to test our uh, uh, preliminary versions of the product were my age, you know, about 40 years old. And then when we were looking at them, working with this, you know, application and said, do you, you don't see that red button there? Why are you not touching that, right? And they were like, oh no, I don't see it. If it was here, if I was doing this, if it was giving me a message, maybe it was easier for me to see it. So we tuned the product to serve that older generation, right? But what we realized, the first, um, the, we hired a user experience scientist with a couple of PhDs and master's <laughs> degrees and stuff. And he said, let's find the dominant shopping behavior, right? And we build a product based on that dominant shopping behavior, right? We brought 200 alpha users in over seven months of uh, alpha testing. And it was not funny because every one of them has a different behavior and every one of them was claiming my behavior is the dominant behavior, right? We built the first version based on my dominant behavior because I know exactly what I want, which store, which brand, which fit, fit, and I have, I can imagine what I want in my mind and I just go and find it. But there are many people who need to be influenced, who need someone to put everything together for them because if you give them this jacket, they really don't know what to wear with it. So Stitch Fix and all other applications, they're serving every dominant behavior, which is great, and they have a demographic that they can serve. But if you want to create a platform, platform is made up many applications. I mean, maybe Mavatar platform, MCART platform, is made of at least 150 applications for different constituencies of the ecosystem. Where we build a pipeline and we give window to each of these users, right? Shoppers, influencers, retailers, salespeople, marketing people, admin of the marketplace. Everyone has their own dashboard and user interface. It took us seven years to develop that product. 50 developers, uh, six PhD of computer science work on this product. So for us, it was bringing all those 200 dominant behavior in and make sure we have 200 windows and doors to this ecosystem for any of them to make uh, to make an entrance, right? So these are all good and we learn from them, but it was the time for aggregating all these great dominant behaviors and applications and create a platform because shoppers are, you know, they can't really carry, as I said, 4,000 or 5,000 apps or even hundreds of them on their cell phones. Does anyone have any questions for Simpson? Sure. I have uh, two questions. Sure. Um, one, where are you from? Oh, originally? Yeah. Uh, I'm Iranian. Oh, cool. Uh, Ecuadorian, so I'm immigrant okay. too. We're not uh, neighbors, but. <laughs> we're not neighbors. No, no, but we're from outside the country. But we're minorities. It, it's, it's great to see entrepreneurs from other countries. It makes me feel special, you know. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the, the question that I have is, so if 5% is happening, which we all know, Amazon, everybody thinks it's a big threat, but they command such a small piece of the economy. Uh, and with that small piece, they're, they great. They, they're lobbying yeah. their influence everywhere. Mm -hmm. But the 95% has, I, I've heard a lot, especially during this conference and meeting other people here today, that there is this, um, 
there is kind of like this apprehension that uh, people won't go to retail, that people don't go, but they're that people won't go physically shopping, which I obviously the data shows otherwise. It's ninety five percent. That's huge. Ninety percent of it is done on uh, offline. But what I, I've heard why why people don't like what they despise about going a, into a shopping experience. Somebody earlier was mentioning, for example, um, you know, waiting in line and things like that. Mm -hmm. But why do people go shop if eighty six? I mean. 86, 80 something percent women, mm -hmm. I guess. Why are they going? Entertainment. And that, that's my question. It's like, why are they going? More data, right? When you go to a shopping center, you're going somewhere you can get ideas, right? You can see the trends. You can quickly touch and feel things because, especially if you're if you're buying a product at ten dollars, you probably don't think that too hard. But if you're buying a five hundred dollar shoes, you really want to try it because returning stuff is not fun, right? So they're going to mall to get ideas, yeah. to uh, touch and feel stuff, and uh, for entertainment. That is missing from online, right? If you're bringing these two worlds together, then we are creating a better better application. So that, make, that makes what you, what you said earlier about the marketplace experience, like in, in the sense of going like a farmer's market, yeah or going somewhere like you're trying to stimulate, I don't know what I'm looking for, I know I wanna go enjoy myself and mm -hmm. kind of get my imagination mm -hmm. spinning. Is that that's yeah, kind of, exactly. okay. exactly, and you can make quicker decision because Marketplace is aggregating everything for you and you don't have to go door by door. You go somewhere, why we're coming to ICSC? This is a Marketplace. Yeah. We learn, we, uh, we network, we make deals in one place and we, willingly give three days of our life and work and everything to come here. This is a marketplace. Marketplace uh, growth was amazing during the last 10 years. 80% growth on marketplace sales. But the problem is, it's really difficult to create a marketplace. It's a platform. You have to build and build and build and build, right? And well, what we did, we created a software <laughs> that creates marketplace very quickly in a matter of weeks and months for the largest inventors of the world. And if you can create more of these marketplaces, definitely the consumers will be happier. And we don't need that, that many of them. Maybe with 10, 20 of these Amazons, the whole entire world will be happy. My question is, I oftentimes have, find a product mm -hmm. that I absolutely love and of course, I make the mistake of buying one. <laughs> yes. Then I go back to get more, yes. and I can't find it. Yeah. And and you can search the internet. You can you'll find the manufacturer, mm -hmm. which of course won't sell. And to usually, you. don't they don't repeat great things. You know, well, they uh, they're not making them if they're it, really good. I don't know why. <laughs> well, or or it's not for some reason not in your market physically. Mm -hmm. How are you going to? address that with I'm trying to understand We're, how are you going to get all the inventory of things in the marketplace that's the part right. I'm, I kind of fuzzy well on it. yeah that's um, the technology behind it I mean there are four or five methods to aggregating all the inventories but what it does which is great and this is one of our major features it's showing you lookalikes of the products if you have more products in your database it's easier to show more lookalikes of that product to the users if you have 10 items the chance of finding a lookalikes is not as much but when you have 200 millions of products, you can algorithmically uh, uh, make it uh, possible to find more lookalikes of that product. So you may not find exact product, or you may find it, you know, if there are more inventories in there, uh, but the chance is definitely higher to find at least something which is 90% close to that for us. And we do that. Actually, this is one of our major features. And What are you going to do next? Thanks, David. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have any plan yet. I'm having fun uh, with building a great product. To me, always the byproduct of the great product is money. But I don't focus on, on the byproduct first. I focus on the product. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. David. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get a picture, you guys, with David with the with the board in the background. That's the host. I was running to the airport. <laughs> <laughs>